Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we look into our practice questions, we have two important announcements. Prelims 2022 Hacks, Mnemonics and Mindmax Episode 8 has been uploaded on our YouTube channel. Kindly look into it. We also have another video, Places in News, for the period between 9th May to 15th May, which is also uploaded on our YouTube channel. So please do like, share with your fellow aspirants. Let's get started and look into the first question. CRISPR Cas9 gene editing tool can be used in developing which of the following applications? Allergy free foods, greener fuels, eradicating pests. The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to CRISPR Cas9. What is this tool all about? As the very name denotes, it is the gene editing tool. What is a gene editing tool? Let's say for example, the scientific community discovers that there is one of the genes in the DNA which has become a defective in nature or this defective nature gene can also give rise to multiple other complications. So this gene editing tool which can act like a scissor this particular gene will be deleted it will be taken off and a new gene can also be inserted so basically what would happen the scientific community can remove add or replace the DNA where it has been cut and this is performed on multiple types of animals we know for the fact that when it comes to mice it has about 85% of the genes that the human beings have so in case they feel that a particular gene in the human being can be having a defective issue which can result in complications such experiments will be conducted on the mice and after inserting or adding multiple genes they will also see what will be the possible repercussions what will be the change effects and ultimately if the change is in the positive way the same is inserted into the human beings in the near future as well so what is this gene editing tool this will basically remove add or replace the DNA where it has been cut off. So when it comes to CRISPR Cas9, this happens to be a gene editing tool and yes, it has been used in all these applications, allergy free food and this can be used for producing greener fuels and also for eradicating pests as well. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements. The first municipal corporation in India was set up at Madras. Lord Mayo's resolution of 1870 has been hailed as the Magna Carta of local self-government. An individual should be minimum 25 years old to contest in municipal elections. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a mention of local government that is the municipal government. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, yes, the first municipal corporation in India was set up at Madras. So the first statement is right. When we look into the second statement, Lord Mayo's resolution of 1870 is not called as the Magna Carta of local self-government. Lord Ripon's resolution of 1882 happens to be hailed as the Magna Carta of local self-government and it is not Lord Mayo's resolution of 1870. Do note that Lord Mayo's resolution is on the financial decentralization and it visualized the development of local self-government institutions. So the second statement is wrong. When you consider the third statement, an individual should be minimum 25 years old to contest in municipal elections. This is a wrong statement. Why? That is because it is 21 years for the municipal elections and it is not 25 years. Since the second and the third statement are wrong, the first statement is right. The answer to this would be one only. Now now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to retinoblastoma, which of the following statements is are incorrect? It is an eye cancer that begins in the retina and affects young children only. In children with retinoblastoma, the disease affects only one eye. Which of the statements are incorrect? Since it is asking for the incorrect statement, the answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to the retinoblastoma. Let us try and understand what are these options options. 
when we look into the first option it says it is an eye cancer that begins in the retina and affects young children only in most of the cases yes this is an eye cancer and in most of the cases it only affects the children but in rare cases it may also affect the adults as well so only in the rare situations it affects the adults and as a result the first statement is wrong when you look into the second statement in children with retinoblastoma the disease affects only one eye in most of the situations yes it does affect one eye but there are also possible chances that it may affect second eye as well so it is not necessary that it is getting infected with one eye but it can also impact the second eye as well so what is this retinoblastoma this happens to be the cancer of the eye this occurs usually in small children it can occur in one or both the eyes and this may be hereditary which can be passed on from the parents or it can occur sporadically as well this happens to be a life threatening disease as well as this can take away the eyesight the vision of that particular child now if we look into the symptoms there will be white reflex in the eye pupil that looks white or yellow instead of red when light hits it squinting or crossed eye looking either toward the nose or towards the ear poor vision with or without white reflex the eye may be red or painful also and if we look into the statistics nearly 1500 to 2000 children are diagnosed with retinoblastoma every year in india the majority of these children belong to the lower socio economic strata of the society and nearly 60% of these patients have advanced disease at the presentation so it is usually associated with high cost of treatment poor access to the care lack of awareness there's social stigma as well and as a result because people are not aware of it because they do not know how to proceed to it number of children lose their vision as well and when it comes to identification generally ocular ultrasonography and fundus examination are the immediate opd procedures its extent is determined by magnetic resonance imaging and systematic staging investigation bone marrow biopsy csf and whole body pet scan these are the number of tests that are present to identify if there is presence of retinoblastoma now let's look into the next practice question nagero karbakh is a territorial conflict between greece and turkey Armenia and Azerbaijan, Iraq and Kuwait, Israel and Palestine. The answer to this is Armenia and Azerbaijan. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to Nagorno-Karabakh region. Do note this particular region happens to be a subject of dispute between Armenia and Azerbaijan for number of years. If you have to consider the international laws, the international law considers that this Nagorno-Karabakh region belongs to Azerbaijan. But what is the major issue here? Number of people in this particular region happens to be armenians these armenians constitute the vast majority in this particular region these people feel they should not be recognized with azerbaijan but instead they should be assimilated with armenia and as a result in spite of this particular region decided as part of azerbaijan people in this region who are majority armenians are not ready to accept it and as a result what we have is conflict in this particular region why are we discussing this now this particular issue had raked up back in the year 2020 number of issues did arise in this particular region as well there was lot of negotiations and deals that were conducted by different country which was also monitored by russia as well but in this particular case there were lot of concessions given to azerbaijan according to the people in armenia Armenia. So, in the present situation, these people feel that Armenia has given too many concessions to Azerbaijan, and now people in Armenia are against the government for giving these concessions, and which is why this particular issue has been in news once again. Now, let's look into the next practice question. What was the exact constitutional status of India on 26 January 1950? A democratic republic. a sovereign democratic republic a sovereign secular democratic republic a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic the answer to this is a sovereign democratic republic 
this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021 when we look into the preamble of the indian constitution it starts with we the people of india so originally when the preamble was envisaged and as discussed by the constituent assembly in 1949 it declared india as a sovereign democratic republic but only in the 42nd constitutional amendment of 1976 what we had was insertion of two new words which happens to be socialist and secular so the original constitution did not have the socialist and secular words in the preamble but it was added as part of the 42nd constitutional amendment act of 1976 now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion is project wadek what is this project wadek all about when we look into the context the army training command recently signed a memorandum of understanding with Gandhinagar based Rashtriya Raksha University for what? To develop a war game research and developmental center in New Delhi. So what is this center all about? The war game research and development center will be used by the army to train its soldiers and test their strategies through metaverse enabled gameplay. So what is this metaverse enabled gameplay? Basically, they will make use of the augmented reality. They will also make use of the virtual reality to ensure that a virtual environment is created for the soldiers so that they are in a much better condition to prepare for the wars as well as for the counter terrorism as well as for the counter insurgency operations who are the contributors of this particular project the rru will join hands with the tech mahindra to develop the center in the upcoming three to four months and this rru also happens to be an institute under the ministry of home affairs and this specializes in national security and policy and it is an institute of national importance which is a status granted by the indian parliament how will these stimulation exercises work out we have the army which will have all the data with respect to the type of the topography the number of incidents taking place in that particular topography and all the relevant data about the topography and the people present in that particular area will be given by the army so this particular center will create a particular structure it will create a particular surrounding making use of the augmented reality as well as the virtual reality so with this particular surrounding created in a virtual world the army intends to make use of this war game center to train its officers in the military strategy so this is not only used for the army eventually this can also be used by the bsf crpf cisf itbp and ssp which can also use the metaverse in enable simulation exercise for better training since the 9 11 attacks use of the information technology enabled war gaming is also preferred by several other countries like united states israel united kingdom to prepare for the possibilities in case of war so it is not only india which is trying to create such virtual war fields but in the past you have multiple other countries which are also working so that the military personnel are aware of this virtual reality so that they can take them into the physical world it is this that we have to understand with respect to this article so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best